Hey guys, my name is Arye Harris. I'm going to talk to you about uh, regex and practical usage, how to use it, so you can start using it like right away. Um, so what is regex? So as you can tell, it looks like this kind of alien looking language sort of thing. And I don't know about you guys, like when I first started coding and maybe started doing code wars and did some like level seven, eight Qs, and I'm like just beginning and I'm like feeling good about my 20 lines of code for like a nice easy eight Q. And then I like look at the solutions and some of these guys have like this one line or crazy looking thing. I'm just like freaking out with what? Like, that's beyond me. It's not. I just want to tell you guys it's a lot easier than it looks. Um, so let's get into it. So what is, what is it? So nice basic definition. Regular expressions are patterns. That's it. They're patterns used to match character combinations and strings. Really simple in JavaScript. They are also objects, which means they're going to have properties on them and um, methods. So let's look at those methods. First, we'll look at the notation. So there's literal notation where you can just set to a variable. You have your slashes, which contain the actual pattern. And then after here, you have your flags. And those flags will give you more advanced options. Um, you want to use this kind of notation when you're, it's going to remain constant, your, your, your pattern. There is the object notation, which is you use the constructor. You can put your pattern in here. Um, you can also use variable. If you have a variable with something, you can put it in here and say like that variable plus ABC, whatever. You would put your flags in here. You would want to use more object notation when you're, it could be changing. Say from user input, user's inputting something, and you're going to be putting that as the pattern. Um, let's look at the methods. So uh, regex methods, there's a .exec, which is it searches for a match in your string. It'll return an array of information or null if it doesn't find anything. And there's a .test method, which says take my regex, apply it to the string and test if it's true or false, if, if there's a match in the string. The string methods, so those are just for on the regex objects. On string methods, there's a dot match, which is extremely similar to dot ex exec for the regex object prototype. Uh, I'm going to get into that soon with my code, show you guys. There's a dot search method, which searches for a match in a string, gives you the index where it starts from in, in the string, or negative one if it fails. There's a dot replace, which is super cool, where it can search for a match and you can replace that match with anything you want. You can, f you can feed it a string to replace it with. You can feed it with a function, which can do all this fancy stuff and replace the match with what the function returns. And then we all know about dot split. Dot split is super simple. You can split on a, on a string, but you can also split on patterns. You can have like super complex patterns to, you know, to, to use for your string and it would split on those. Um, so flags. So I'm really gonna talk about the first two, the last three, I'm probably not gonna have enough time. The G flag's a global search. Usually if you just say like, here's my, here's my string and do a dot match with this pattern, global search won't just stop after the first time it finds the match. It'll go through the entire string, try to find all the matches it can. I is case insensitive, super simple. It's really easy, guys. It's like all this stuff. It's like so much easier than it looks. Just such a relief like when I started learning it to see. Um, so I is case insensitive. And that'll, so it doesn't matter if your pattern has uppercase or lowercase letters. It doesn't matter if your string is uppercase or lowercase letters. It'll match everything. So let's look at some code. So here's my string. Regex is awesome. Regex is so much fun. Really enthusiastic. Here's my expression, my, my pattern. So I'm using the constructor uh, way of building it. And notice I'm just checking for the regex. Notice these uh, parentheses around the G. That's called a capture group. We'll get into that later. It's basically remembering the match there. And here are my flags. So if I log out here, right here, I'm going to say string. So my string is here. I'm going to dot match with the pattern. I'm going to run it. We get a match. We get an array. And it gives us back all the matches it found. So it found this first regex, and it found this second regex here. And it ignores the case, which is cool. Let's say I got rid of the global flag. We get this array-like object back. It finds the first match because it's not a global search. Here is the first match. The G right here is the capture group, which it captured here using the parentheses. And then you can access these properties use with the zero index here, the one index here. Um, you can access the where the, it's found at what, what index in the string using the dot index off of this array. And you can do dot input if you wanted to to get the original input that was put in. So that is using the dot match method. Dot exec is extremely similar. The main diff takeaway between match and exec, which exec is on the uh, object prototype is that you want to use match when match will loop through your string by itself. So it'll find all the matches if you use a global a flag. Dot exec will not do that. Even if you have a global flag, it will not loop through. You have to do a manual loop. But that might be good for you because it'll give you this array-like object with capture groups. And you can loop through and it'll find it every time, give you the capture groups every time and all this extra information. So it just depends on what you need it for. So let's look at the special characters in regex. So a decimal point or period, whatever you want to call it, it matches any character except line terminators. So when you put this, when you start building your pattern and you have your decimal point, that's saying 
give me any character at this point. It could be anything. It just can't be a line terminator, like a new line or a carriage return. But any other character, numbers, letters, anything. <coughs> D matches a digit. That's the same as saying in the brackets, 0 through 9. So this is a range, 0 through 9. You can do a 0 through 2, let's say. That's also a range. And this is called a character set, because you're putting in the set. And you're saying, in my pattern, at this point, I want it to match anything within the set. W is matching any alphanumeric character, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, plus an underscore. So, uh, so S matches any white space character, which includes like a tab or a character turn or a new line. The opposite of these is a uppercase D, which says match anything here as long as it's not a number. Same thing as putting in a character set your numbers, 0 through 9, with a caret beforehand. The caret says not in this set here. Same thing with the, the uppercase W. It's saying match anything that's not an alphanumeric character. Same thing with uppercase S. Match anything that's not a space character, which excludes a, would, would exclude a, a tab, a new line, that kind of stuff. So character sets like we were just talking about. This would say, in my pattern at this point, match anything as long as it's an A, D, J, or Z. So find any of those. If it's there, good. That'll, that'll return a match. Here you can do a range, A through G if you want. This is being like, don't. It can be anything that can't be A, B, C, or D. This is saying it could be alf any alphanumeric character. It could be a, a dash, it could be a period, or it could be a star. That's, that, this is the long way of writing it. So W makes it a lot so shorter instead of having to write A through Zs and all the numbers here. Here, um, let's talk about quantifiers. Quantifiers is a way of quantifying your pattern and how it's going to match up in your string. So the star will say, any preceding item, I'm going to have like a, a, a number or anything, or I can have like a sub-pattern within my overall pattern. That would be wrapped in parentheses. We'll get to that later. And you can have a quantifier right after. It's saying, match this zero or more times. Plus will say, match this at least once. So one or more. Question mark is saying, you can, it can either not be there, you don't have to match it. If you do match it, great. So zero or one times. Um, if you put N in between uh, br braces, you're saying, it has to be a positive number, and you're saying it has to match it that many times. If you do, you can do a range between n and m. You can also get rid of the m, and you can say, and that would mean at least n times. So you can do also do a range, or yeah. So let's talk about greedy versus lazy quantifiers. So this is a little complicated. At least it seems like a big. When I was learning, it, it's a little complicated, but I think I have a good way of explaining it. A greedy quantifier is any quantifier like I just showed you, just plain, just like this. If a greedy will say match as much as possible in my string. So if I have a pattern, or let's say a number, and I say take this number, match it uh, one or more times, that's greedy, because it's going to match as many numbers as it can within that string one or more times. It'll, it'll, so it'll match the longest possible substring within your string. If you do lazy, lazy is when you follow any of those quantifiers. So it could be a question mark itself. It could be an asterisk. It could be a plus sign. But you follow with a question mark. It's saying match that pattern, let's say, one or more times. But do that match as least amount of times as you can. Which, in better English, that means once the condition is satisfied, that it's, something's been found in your string, stop right there. Don't keep going. Greedy will be like, oh, I, f I found a match. It, my condition was satisfied, but I'll keep going to the end of, to, until I can't find any more. Lazy will stop the first time it finds it. So boundaries, um, you can do, these are not like really matches. <coughs> I'm just going to really talk about these first two right now. The caret will say, if you put it at the beginning of your pattern, you're saying match anything that begins at the beginning of a line. So if you put it at the beginning of your pattern, you're saying anything right after that has to be at the beginning of a line. The dollar sign is the opposite. It's at the end of the line. So any, any, I'm, saying, I'm putting a dollar sign at the end. It has to match it at the end of the line, whatever I have over there. Um, you can also, if you use the M flag, which I didn't talk about before, this would work between new line characters in your string. So it would match before new line characters and after new line ca characters when you're using the uh, caret and dollar sign. So that's boundaries. Assertions. Let's talk about assertions. So this is cool. So JavaScript supports look-aheads, which is when you have, you're saying, I want to match x, but only match x if it's followed by y, whatever y is. And there's a negated look-ahead, and it's saying, only match x in my pattern if it's not followed by y. Other languages support look-behinds. Um, JavaScript does not support that. You're able to sort of mimic look-behinds with a replace function, but it's not exactly the same thing. For whatever reason, JavaScript does not support it, but you have these look-aheads. Um, there's also alternations, which is saying, if you give me x or y, you can like chain these. You could say, check if there's x here or y or some other thing, whatever you want. You can keep going. Um, grouping and back references. So you can match and remember x, whatever your pat in your pattern. If you wrap it within parentheses, you're just telling your pattern, remember this match, so that you can later reference it within your pattern. 
So with a, with a backslash n, and n is any positive number, where it's ma you go by the left parenthetical, meaning you, if you have like three capture groups, right? So slash one will match the first one, slash two will match the second one, and the slash three will match the third one. You can, in your, in your pattern, use that to reference, oh, so this, you, this got remembered at the first capture group. I want to take what was remembered there and use it later on in my pattern. And for better performance, if you don't need to have a capture group to remember stuff, you can just use question mark, colon, and then whatever you want afterwards. That will, it's a group, so it's like a sub-pattern within your overall pattern. And you can do that um, and chain off that. Like you can have quantifiers on a whole sub-pattern, let's say, to quantify that entire pattern within your overall pattern. And it's better to do this for performance if you don't need it to be captured, to, to make it uncaptured. Um, so that's basically it. Since I still have some time, it seems, I was going to show you guys um, maybe like a gre the greedy example. So here I have a string of HTML. It has the tags plus the text. And using a greedy match, I'm saying HTML match a string. It should, there should be, the match should be any less than uh, character followed by one or more of any character followed by a greater than character. So if we ran this, we'd get here the entire string because it keeps going. It's greedy. Even though it found this greater than character and it should have stopped there, it doesn't because it's considered as part of the any character one or more and it keeps going. If we were to make this lazy, what we would get, which would be our intended result, is just the tags. Because the second it finds this, because we put the question mark after the quantifier, it makes it lazy. So it's, it's lazy. So once it finds the greater than, it'll stop right there and return just, and it'll, since it's global, it'll get all the tags we want. But it won't give us the entire string. It'll give us just the tags. We can analyze that. Um, so yeah, I have some cool resources here. I just used an HTML example, but it's a really controversial based on what I've read online and stuff. Dylan Powers from our past cohort, he gave a talk on regex, the more theoretical aspects of it, and talks about why you should not be using uh, regex with HTML stuff. I have, a referen I have a resource to his talk and the Stack Overflow stuff. Check that out. Um, and yeah, that's my talk. Thank you very much, guys.